This is the episode nine of Stock Market 101, and today we are talking about value investing. Check it out. What's up guys, it's Nairman Z here and now that you have grasped all the basics of stock market and economy and different types of securities, I want to introduce you to different styles of investing. Value investing is a strategy that is used for picking stocks that seem to be trading for less than their book value, also known as their intrinsic value. Value investors care about true value of a business in long term rather than small price movements in short term. When the prices drop, value investors actually get excited and thrilled because they know they can buy stocks at a bargain price. Value investors acknowledge that the markets are actually not efficient and other investors seem to overvaluate or undervaluate the stocks at different times. That's why value investors can jump in and buy the stock at the right price. If you want to know that a company is actually worth buying, you can look at set of metrics and parameters that were originally introduced by Benjamin Graham, also known as the father of value investing. Here are some of the most important metrics. First of all, he recommends buying a company that is large, around 700 million revenue or higher per year. Two, a company that's conservatively financed, meaning that the debt is much smaller than the overall company asset value. So that at the times of difficulty, they can pay all their debt. The current ratio of 1.2 to two is recommended. And current ratio is basically the company assets divided by total liabilities. Three, no earning deficit in the past 10 years, meaning that the earnings have always been positive. Four, earning growth of 2.9% annually or better for the past 10 years. Five, cheap price, meaning that asset minus liabilities is more than the market cap. And market cap is basically the total value of stocks of the company. Six, P-E ratio being lower than 15. And P-E ratio is basically the price divided by earnings. The lower it is, it means that you are paying a lower price for the earnings you receive. And finally, nice to have characteristic is that the company has paid dividend for the past few years. But if they didn't, it's not a deal breaker. If you do all these calculations and majority of them pass, that means you're investing at a valuable company at a fair price. That means your wealth will grow in long term. Now let me introduce you to two of the main figures in value investing who basically define this concept for us. You have to know Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett. Well, we cannot have two fathers for value investing, therefore you can assume that Ben Graham was the grandfather and Warren Buffett was the father. Especially because Buffett was his student at Columbia University and added his own style and principles to value investing later on. Benjamin Graham's holy grail of investing is the Intelligent Investor book that I highly recommend for every investor to read. That is where he initially introduces you to those seven metrics that I mentioned earlier as well as other lessons and tricks that you can apply every day. Besides those metrics, Ben Graham had other valuable principles that he lived by and applied in his world of investing. I'm going to share five of them with you. Number one, price doesn't mean value. Imagine you own a house and every single day some random guy knocks on your door and offers to buy your house. If he offers to buy the house from you at half of the price you paid for, does that mean the value of your house has dropped by 50%? No, absolutely not. Your house is as valuable as it was yesterday and the value did not change just because someone offered to pay a lower price for it. Well, stock market is no different. Stock is an ownership of a business, not just a price with a ticker symbol. Nowadays, we have stock platforms on our phones that tell us the price of every stock at every given moment in real time. Just like the guy who knocks on your door, you should not panic if the value of your stock drops tomorrow, nor you should get too excited if the price goes up. Number two, buy businesses that you're willing to own in the future. You should not buy a stock just because the price dropped yesterday or because your cousin or your other friends are talking about it every day. 
You have to understand that ownership of a stock is just like ownership of the entire company. So if you're not willing to own that entire company in the future, you should not bother. The third principle is margin of safety, which basically takes into account the possibility of human error in valuating a stock price. You should always consider a percentage of error in the valuation of the stock and accept that loss immediately when you purchase that stock. That is why he insists that you go for stocks that are far less priced than the actual true value so you can minimize such risks. Fourth principle is that the risk and reward are not always correlated. Just because you want the maximum return doesn't mean that you should go ahead and take the maximum risk. Instead, the maximum rewards come from maximum skills, knowledge, and discipline. And finally, diversification. Just because you cannot control every single business that is in your portfolio, Ben Graham recommends that you at least invest in three to five businesses if you're an active investor and 10 to 30 businesses if you're a passive investor. That takes care of idiosyncratic risk associated with specific businesses. That way, if one of the companies goes bankrupt or hits major roadblocks, at least you're not going to lose your entire fortune. The second holy figure in this game is Warren Buffett. He was Benjamin Graham's disciple and learned from him, especially by reading the Intelligent Investor book and attending Columbia University, where he taught him lessons of investing. Buffett is considered one of the greatest investors of all time. At a young age, he bought a textile company called Berkshire Hathaway and turned it into a $500 billion conglomerate over time. His style of investing was very similar to Ben Graham, so I'm not going to waste your time by repeating them again. Instead, I'm going to talk about the additional items that he added to his style of investing and learned throughout the time by making a lot of mistakes. First of all, good management matters. Because as an investor, you don't have time to manage every single company that you own. Or you might not even have enough shares to influence the management of the company. Instead, you should put your money in businesses with competent and intelligent investors so you can have peace of mind and let them manage your money for you. Number two, Good businesses matter. Warren Buffett always says that it is better to buy a wonderful business at a fair price than buy a fair business at a wonderful price. After a few bad experiences, Warren Buffett decided to abolish cigar butt investing. Cigar butt investing is basically buying failing businesses at the verge of a collapse and make sure you pay a very cheap price for it. Then you can do some renovations and modifications to that business and get it up and running and sell it for a higher price. Just like picking up little cigar butts from a sidewalk on the street and taking the last puff from it. There's not much smoke left in them, but you get a lot of value considering the price you paid for. Warren Buffett realized that it's a big hassle to buy bad businesses. It is much more profitable to buy good businesses with a healthy business model and a fantastic management team. The third principle is the fact that he always says his favorite holding period is forever. He's always a net buyer and he sells his positions only at very special circumstances that the companies are failing or he doesn't see any value in holding them. Number four is that make sure the business you're investing in has an economic moat. Just like how castles in ancient times had moats around them to protect them from outside danger, Businesses need to have competitive advantage and strategies that help them survive in long term. That way, they won't get crushed by their rivals. And finally, he insists that make sure you buy a business that you understand. Warren Buffett insists that you stay within your circle of competence, meaning that you only invest in businesses that you fully understand the business model and the industry. That's why majority of his investments involve banks, food and drink industry, and retailers. So it's totally okay if you want to invest in new social media companies or cannabis businesses as long as you fully understand what they're doing. And that is all I had to say about value investing principles to get you started. Even though it sounds like a very old method, it is still practiced by young investors and it's transforming every day to a new shape and form. So as long as you invest in good businesses with good metrics at a cheap price with margin of safety, and good diversification, you may say that you are a value investor. The whole point is to take the emotional piece out. That's why you have to only consider these businesses for long term. A lot of times investors get too emotional and lose a lot of money. The two driving forces are fear and greed and sticking to value investing can help you stay out of it 
and only think about logical concepts throughout the time. That's it for today. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and write in the comments below what type of investing styles you really like and what types have actually worked for you to make a lot of money. Also make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done already and hit the notification bell so it notifies you every week that I upload a video. Take care of yourself during this pandemic and don't forget that money never sleeps. Peace.